patarubhyasya kripa sindhu bhayavacha patitanam pavanibhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadarha shri vasade gaur bhaktavinda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We're reading Brihad Bhagavatam Rita and we're hearing about the travels of a cowherd boy from Govardhan named Gop Kumar who had been given a mantra by his guru and by the power of the mantra he was able to travel everywhere. So by the power of the mantra, he went first of all to Jagannath Puri, and in Jagannath Puri, he became the king of Jagannath Puri. And he was able to connect, to meet closely Lord Jagannath. But he, he, he had some dissatisfaction there in Jagannath Puri. He didn't feel that he was able to get intimate enough with the Lord and he left there and he went to the heavenly planets. So in the heavenly planets he became Indra. At one point, he, they made him Indra, the king of heaven. But he also became dissatisfied in the heavenly planets because sometimes, sometimes the Lord would disappear. Sometimes the Lord would come and sometimes he would disappear. Then he met some great sages who came from a planet above the heavenly planets. They were from a planet called Mahaloka. So Gob Kumar, by the power of the mantra, he went to Mahaloka. And he met there with all the great souls there and how they were offering sacrifices all the time. And the Lord would personally come and accept the offerings. So when he was on Mahaloka, he met these great souls who came from a higher planet, a planet above Mahaloka called Tapaloka. And the people who came from Tapaloka were like little children. But they were, and they were naked, but they were great sages, and they were fixed in meditation, and they were in, tran in trance. So Gob Kumar was attracted to go there and he went to Tapaloka and he found that everybody there was engaged in meditation on the Lord. 
，所以呃 g o p a k u m a r a 他就决定要去到 t a p a l o k a 那么当他来到 t a p a l o k a 之后呢，他就发现，在这里的所有的人都处在对主的冥想之中。So the the nature of life on t a p a l o k a was very Special. It was very opulent, and it was very pure, and there was great happiness there. 那么，在塔帕洛克的这种生活的这种特征呢，就非常的纯净，嗯，非常的富裕。在这里的所有的人们都非常的开心。And all the people there, they were lifelong celibates. They had never ever engaged in any sexual activity. And they were living there, performing meditation on the form of the Lord in the heart. 在这里的所有的居民们，他们都是终身遵守的，他们就不会有任何的这个呃呃，就他们是终身遵守的，他们一直都是处于非常纯净的状态，而且呢，在他们所从事的所有的活动，就始终都是在冥想着内心的主。So Gop Kumar, he was used to. He always had the desire. He wanted to see the Lord and to be with the Lord and to have exchanges with the Lord. That Gop Kumar, his heart desire was to see the Lord and to have exchanges with the Lord. That Gop Kumar, his heart desire was to see the Lord and to have exchanges with the Lord. That Gop Kumar, his heart desire was to see the Lord and to have exchanges with the Lord. That Gop Kumar, his heart desire was to He was thinking he should go back to Jagannath Puri because in Jagannath Puri he was able to see the Lord constantly. So when he was in Tapaloka, he was thinking he should go back to Jagannath Puri because when he was in Jagannath Puri, he could see the Lord constantly. So while he was thinking in that way, one of the sages on Tapaloka came to him and spoke to him. When he was thinking in that way, 在塔帕洛克的一位圣人就来到他的面前，并且和他讲话了。So this sage, he was, his name was Pipalayana, and he was, he was the, 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 he was the fifth son of the nine Yogendras. There are nine Yogendras who were all self-realized souls who were the sons of Rishabdi. 呃，这位圣人呢，他的名字是 Pipalayana。那 Pipalayana 呢？呃 ，Pipalayana 他是九有根者的儿子。那九有根者是 Rishabdev 的儿子。Not Yogendra 的儿子 ，Rishabdev 的儿子。Yes, yes, but 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 Yogendra is the、um, father of people.、Uh, I mean, nine. Huh? I mean, Pipalayana is the son of、uh, nine Ju- Yogendras, right? No, he is one. He is one of the nine Yogendras. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 是是那个嗯 ，so so much the the son the 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 father's name. Rishabdev. Rishabdev, yes, yes. And the this this Yogendra is Rishabdev's son. Yeah, Rishabdev had a hundred sons, and of his hundred sons, nine of them were self-realized souls, and they are called the nine Yogendras. Hmm. 呃、uh, ，Rishabdev 呢，他有一百个儿子。那么，呃，其中的九位儿子呢，是自我觉悟的灵魂，他们被称为叫九有根者。So people Aina came to Gop Kumar and he said to him, he said, you know, you you're so fortunate. You've come to this very pure place, Tapaloka. You're so fortunate to come here. Why are you thinking to leave? 所以呢。So he told he told Gop Kumar. He said, "You should concentrate your mind in meditation." 
所以呢，他就对波波红儿说：“你应该把你的心念专注在冥想之中。” And then you'll see the Lord everywhere. 那然后你就能够无处不在的见到主了。You'll see him within. You'll see him without. It, just like you're always, like he's always with you as a person. 你就会从内在以及在外在都见到他，然后呢，你会觉得他是始终和你在一起的那个人。So he t- he told Gob Kumar that Lord Vasudev is the supreme soul, and he reveals himself to that person who is completely pure in their heart. Hmm. Then he said, "He said, 主 Vasudev 是呃纯粹的灵魂，并且呢，他以他自己以以这样的形象在内心中显现。” He won't appear anywhere else unless you're really pure in the heart. So when your mind is fully fixed on Lord Vasudev, then you'll get direct vision of him. So if your mind is fully fixed on Lord Vasudev, then you'll get direct vision of him. 那么你的呃，就是你就能够呃得到对他的直接的视野。And、uh, you'll see him with your eyes, but you'll see what's taking place in the heart. 呃，你会以你的双眼见到他，但是你会见到他在你的心中。Because Gob Kumar, he has a doubt. His doubt is. That the he's thinking this meditation is not really valid. Because Gopal Kumar, he has some doubt. His doubt is that he doesn't think that this meditation is really useful. Gopal Kumar, he he wants direct perception. He wants to see the Lord directly with his own eyes. Because Gopal Kumar, he wants to see the Lord directly with his own eyes. So people lie in this stage. People lie now. He's arguing to him. He's telling him that you see him with the, your eyes, but you see the heart. So people lie now. In this here, and in Chinese, this point, is that you can see him with your own eyes, but you see him in your heart. He is in your heart. Because what we actually see with our eyes, it's coming from the heart. It's Is being the eyes are being guided by the heart. So only after we put everything else out of the mind, only then does the Lord reveal Himself in the heart. And it's a mind that actually does the work of revealing the Lord. 事实上呢，是心念，他在揭示着主。这个工作是由心念来做的。We're thinking. I am, you know, the, dev- the devotee may be thinking, "Oh, I'm seeing Krishna, not with my eyes, but by my mind." According to this sage, people, Ina, a realization of God is only concrete. Because it's only real because of the power of the mind. Hmm. That, according to people lying, the saint's this kind of revelation is, is that we, uh, our this kind of knowledge, uh, is from our mind. It's not the eyes because the eyes have limited vision. Hmm. That, it's not the eyes because the eyes have limited vision. Hmm. That, it's not the eyes because the eyes have limited vision. Hmm. That, it's not the eyes because the eyes have limited vision. Hmm. That, it's not the eyes because the eyes have limited vision. Our eyes cannot understand all the 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 limbs of the supreme personality of Godhead. Our eyes cannot understand all the limbs of the supreme personality of Godhead. 
And we cannot, with our eyes, we cannot recognize the beauty of the Lord. So he gives the example, he said, just like when the mind is happy, all the senses are automatically happy. And all the functions of the senses, all the whatever we hear, whatever we see and speak, all of these things, they're, they're, these functions are all included in the mind. So Gop Kumar, he's, he's attached to seeing with his eyes the form of the Lord. He's not so much, he's, he thinks, oh, this is enjoying, enjoyment of the mind, seeing the Lord in the mind, this is too abstract. But people Aina is telling him that that happiness of the mind, it, it's not only to the eyes, but to all the senses. When the mind is not, when the mind is in distress, then the senses will, will, they'll, they will also feel the distress. So there's a connection between happiness of the mind and happiness of the senses. All the senses, we have to understand all the senses have their roots in the mind. Just like the branches and leaves of a tree get their nourishment from, from the, the roots of the tree. In the same way, when the mind is satisfied, then our senses will also be satisfied. But still, Gob Kumar, he may say that what the mind does when one when we remember that is not equal to what the what we actually uh, what we are actually doing with with our what we're actually doing with our organs like speak speaking and seeing what the mind does when we remember it's okay. Just like when we chant and when we we chant and we, we also we can at the same time we can also see. So our senses enjoy different pleasures from the different pleasures from the mind. The pleasures of the senses is different from the mind. So that, 
So this is the argument of Gop Kumar. But Pipalaina, he answers this. He says that the functions of the senses are included in the functions of the mind. But just like when we chant the Lord's name and when we see the deity and all other things which we do, it's all made possible by the action of the mind. Yeah, if the mind is not functioning, then the functions of all the senses are useless. Even though we may act, the things which we do will be, will, they won't be performed. They won't, it will be like we never did anything because, yes. because we won't be able to perceive it. So people Aina is arguing this point again. Just like when the mind is inattentive, then our senses may do things, but they cannot they cannot establish the real contact with the objects. Each of our senses have different objects. Just like form is for the sense of the sight. And texture is for the sense of touch. Right, so different senses are meant for different sense objects. But the purpose of the senses is only achieved when they connect with the objects. And the, but the, and in a, there should one should also know what, that he's doing that. We should be actually we should be able to perceive this. But in order to be able to perceive, to understand that we're doing these things, there's two other things which are required. One is the mind and the other is the soul. If our mind is not fixed on the on if it's not receiving the input from an object, then there will be no sensation. And there will be no conscious there will be no consciousness about doing it. So this we understand this 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 is explained in relation to everyday life. Everyone should be able to understand this point.
So people lying, people lying are continues arguing. He said, if you see seeing the seeing God, it is in reality what we're actually seeing is the Lord manifesting Himself through the functions of our pure mind. When you actually see God, it's not actually through the eyes. Because the Lord cannot be perceived by material senses. So uh, to see Krishna is beyond the power of our senses. But if the Lord, if he wants to show compassion on the devotees, he can reveal himself. And then they can actually see the Lord with their eyes. But that vision is only possible by the power of the mind. We are thinking the eyes to be, by the eyes we are seeing him. We're seeing the Lord. We're thinking like that, but actually it's not. We're seeing him by the power of the mind. Now, people will argue, they'll say, well, what about devotees like Dhruva and Prahlad Maharaj? Didn't they also, didn't they see the Lord with their eyes? Yeah, both Dhruva and Prahlad are famous for having met the Lord in person. So we should understand in that their situation, the Lord revealed himself due to his affection for them. Because they were so devoted to him, the Lord has so much fatherly feeling for them. So he appeared to them for the purpose, uh, just for the purpose of their eyes. But we should understand that they actually saw the Lord through pure consciousness, not through the physical eyes. What we can see with our physical eyes is very limited. We cannot understand something which is infinite or unlimited. So we, we will ask then, why are Dhruva and Prahlad famous for having had the Lord's darshan? And isn't the Lord famous as being, as for relating with his devotees, for having loving reciprocation with his devotees? 
呃，难道主不是因为和这些奉献者有充满爱的交流和互动而呃声名远扬吗 ？So we should understand that the devotee is a jiva soul, and he is identifying with his own senses. 那我们应该明白，呃，奉献者他是呃个体灵魂，所以说呢。And they are thinking they're seeing the Lord directly with their eyes. So we have to understand this was the kindness of the of Krishna to them. But just by their eyes, they're not able to see what is beyond the power of the eyes. But it doesn't mean that our eyes are useless. And even if we have the power. Of his, even if we get the mercy of Krishna, he becomes, he may become visible to our eyes. But the bliss that comes from seeing him has its natural course. The source of that bliss is in the heart. 嗯，那呃，就即便是呃，在是不是那的仁慈之下，也许可能我们能够通过双眼见到他，但是呢，这种感受到的极乐之感，它是来自于内心之中的。Yeah, we could say that the Lord is free to do whatever He wants. 那我们可以说主他有自由意志去做任何他想做的事情。So yes, we agree. He can do miracles. And he will do something miraculous for the benefit of the living entities, not just not just for uh him his own pleasure. 嗯，而且呢，他会为了要受益于生物体而施展奇迹。他这么做并不仅仅是为了他自己的快乐。And he's not thinking about the soul's dead senses, the inner senses. The Lord is not performing miracle just to give pleasure to the senses of an individual. But the compassion of the Lord, that could make the physical eyes able to see Him. If the Lord desires, then that's possible. But the pleasure which we feel. It 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 doesn't come from the eyes, but it actually comes from the heart. The different emotions which we feel, just like pain and pleasure and anxiety, all of these things, these are coming from the mind. It's not coming from the senses itself, but they're coming. It's, it's feelings which come from the mind. So the these feelings are not coming from the senses itself, but they're coming. It's feelings which come from the mind. So the these feelings are not coming from the senses itself, but they're coming. It's feelings which come from the mind. So the these feelings are not coming from the senses itself, but they're coming. It's feelings which come from the mind. So the these feelings are not coming from the senses itself, but they're coming. It's feelings which come from the mind. So the these feelings are not coming from the senses itself, but they're coming. It's feelings which come from the mind. So the these feelings are not coming from the senses itself, but they're coming. It's feelings which come from the mind. So the these feelings are not coming from the senses itself, but they're coming. It's feelings which come from the mind. So the these feelings are not coming from the senses itself, but they're coming. It's feelings which come from the mind. So the these feelings are not coming from the senses itself, but they're coming. It's feelings which come from the mind. So the these feelings are not coming from the senses itself, but they're coming. It's feelings which come from the mind. So the these feelings are not coming from the senses itself, but they're coming. It's feelings which come from the mind. So the these feelings are not coming from the senses itself, but they're coming. It's feelings which come from the mind. So the these feelings are not coming from the senses itself, but they're coming. It's feelings which come
So the person who, who actually saw the Lord, he will still be feeling bliss, although the Lord is no more present. And that, so that pleasure is in the mind. Hmm. So devotee may think, oh, with my own eyes, I saw the Lord. I saw him right before me. And after the Lord goes away, then the devotee is still thinking, oh, I was so fortunate. So the ecstasy is there in the heart. It's not in the senses. So when we see the Lord, it's not actually by the eyes that we see Him. We see Him by the heart. But we should, at the same time, we understand that seeing is one of the sources of knowledge. We get knowledge by seeing things. So why should we be unable to uh, to feel why uh, if it's like that we should be able to also feel pleasure? But the most we have to understand the best way to receive pleasure of the senses is in the mind. The real pleasure is there in the mind, it's not just, it's not the senses. The mind, is, that we give an example, is the mind is like the most reliable, servant of a king. So the king may have something very valuable, something very precious, some jewels or some, and he can give it, he, can, he trusts his servant, he can give them to his servant. So the mind is like that. Just like when the mind becomes peaceful, so to that extent, we feel more, the more we are peaceful in the mind, the more we feel pleasure. And there's no, we cannot feel that same pleasure just by the senses. Somebody may say, well, the mind is limited like the other senses, and that's true. But when the mind becomes pure, when when the con when 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 we get rid of all the contamination from the mind, then the Lord is satisfied. 
，当新建中所有的这些污染呃污呃这个污浊都被清理掉的时候，这份主就会感到很满意。And at that time, he gives his real mercy. 那在这会儿呢，主就会给出他真正的仁慈。嗯。So the pure consciousness is reflected in the mind. Then. Uh, 那所以说呢，呃，真，呃 ，sorry, the pure consciousness reflected in the mind like that. Yeah, when the soul is, in when the soul, when the consciousness of, is pure, then that consciousness is reflected in the mind. Okay, 就是当这个呃。呃，知觉它变得纯净的时候，那么这个纯净的知觉它就会从心念中折射出来。And then you're able to keep the form of the Lord in the mind。然后，然后呢，就能够把主的这个形象留在心念之中了。But the other senses, they're not able to do that. The mind can do that, but not the other senses. 但是只有心念才能够做到这一点。其他的各种感官是没有办法做到这一点的。So if the Lord wants, He can expand it. He can give special mercy. 所以如果主要愿意的话呢，他是可以扩展，并且呢，给出他特别的仁慈的。Then you can see the Lord within by meditation. 那然后我们就可以通过冥想，在内心中见到主了。And seeing him within is just like directly seeing him with the eyes. 而在内心中见到主，就好似通过我们的双眼直到直接见到主一般。And we we understand this based on what happened to Lord Brahma. 那我们呃通过在主 Brahma 身上所发生的事情，能够了解到这一点。So. We want to we we want to keep our respect for the sage people, Aina. We want to show respect to him. Hmm. That we, of course, is, um, hope to show respect to the sage people, Aina. So, theoretically, we can accept that you can get more happiness from meditating. So, we can accept that you can get more happiness from meditating on the Lord than from simply trying to see him. 所以呢，从理论上来讲，我们能够接受，呃，相比于直接见到主，我们可以通过用心念去冥想主而得到更多的快乐。If you just try to see the Lord with the physical eyes, it won't give as much pleasure as what you get when you meditate on Him. 如果我们要是仅仅是通过肉眼去见到主的话，所得到的快乐远远不及通过心念去冥想主而得到的快乐。But at the same time, we can also say that if we directly see the Lord, then we get that special happiness. And we can get benedictions from the Lord in that way. 然后以这样的方式呢，我们可以从主那里得到呃祝福。And we can speak with him. 我们可以和他讲话。And we can have other kinds of personal interactions with him. 我们还可以和他有其他的各种各样的亲身的互动和交流。So this is this is、uh, the argument against、uh, sage Pipalina. So the sage answers. 嗯，那所以说呢，这就是呃，圣人 Blind 呢，他的要点。然后呢，这个圣人回答道 ：He says, when when you see the Lord within the heart, then He provides all the same benefits. 他说呢，当你在内心中见到主的时候，主就会提供所有的呃同样的益处。He reveals Himself within the heart.、嗯 And he can give boons, and he can speak with his devotees. 而且呢，他也能够赐以祝福，他能够和这位奉献者讲话。No, you can do. You can touch him. Everything you can do. 嗯，呃，那么你可以和他有交流，可以做任何事情。He can. 
you can do all of this within the heart. Because he is, he is the Lord of the heart. He is the Almighty Lord. And he has special energies that arrange for him to do all these wonderful things. So to give an example of this, Pipalina gives an example about what happened to Lord Brahma. So Lord Brahma was he took his birth from the lotus flower. So when he was first born, he found himself sitting on a lotus. It's described in the second canto, Bhagavatam. And it, he, he, he saw that he was surrounded by darkness everywhere. So he did not know what he needed to do to begin to recreate the universe. But then he heard a, a voice, a mysterious voice was heard, and they told him, told him to meditate. And so Brahma did that. And when he did that, then the Supreme Lord revealed himself and his abode. So the Lord was very satisfied with Lord Brahma that he did everything, he did all the austerities. So he, that's why the Lord showed him his personal board, Vaikuntha. It's a, the supreme planet above all other planets. And it's the place where all the self-realized persons who are free from all the miseries where they all live. So in Vaikuntha, Lord Brahma saw the personality of Godhead, Lord Narayan. Lord Brahma could see in the Vaikuntha planets that the personality of Godhead is there and he's the Lord of all the, all the devotees. And he's the Lord of the Goddess of Fortune. And he's the Lord of all sacrifices. And he's the Lord of the universe. And the Lord was being served by all of his immediate associates. He was served by people like Nanda and Sunanda and Prabhala and Arhana. Uh, and the Lord was leaning. He was leaning towards them. He was very, very he was, he was slightly in intoxicated. 
His very, just seeing the Lord was intoxicating. Sorry, Marta, I didn't hear it very. He's what? He's... Uh, well, just the, the sight of the Lord was intoxicating for the devotees. So Brahma not only saw the form of the Lord, but also he had an intimate personal exchange with him. Lord Brahma, when he saw the Lord, he bowed down before the Lord. And the Lord, when he saw Brahma before him, he, he accepted him as being worthy to create the living being. And the Lord was so much satisfied with Lord Brahma that the Lord shook hands with him. And then he spoke with him. And when Lord Narayan spoke to him, he spoke to him to encourage him to ask a boon. So Lord Brahma asked to give that you should give me instructions on how to create the universe. And so the Lord responded by telling him, he spoke the four verse Srimad Bhagavatam, the Chatur Sloki Bhagavatam. And then Lord, the Lord Narayan then disappeared from the sight of Brahma. So the, then it's the after this happened, then Lord Brahma he he had received instructions from the Lord. And Lord, Bra Lord Brahma is the leader, he's the leader of all the living entities. So Lord Brahma was, uh, from this passage we, we see how Lord Brahma meditated on the Supreme Lord in the heart. And, and the Lord mercifully appeared before him. And he, he gave bones and he spoke with him and he touched him. So all of these things happened in Lord Brahma's meditation. And the third canto also describes the same thing. It describes at the end of Lord Brahma's 100 years, when his meditation was complete, then he developed the required knowledge to do the creation. So Lord Brahma 
นะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะ Within himself. Okay, so But before, previously, could not see him with all, even despite intense endeavor. So Lord Brahma saw on the water. He saw in the water of the the ocean in the bottom of the universe. He saw a gigantic lotus-like white bedstead, bedstead, the body, the body of Shesha Naga. Yeah. So, 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 The Lord Personality of Godhead, He was laying on Sheshanaga. And the the whole place, the whole atmosphere was lit by the jewels which are on the heads of Sheshanaga. Because there was darkness everywhere, so the only light came from the jewels. So then the Bhagavatam goes on to describe how Lord Brahma became. He got. He became in the mode of passion, and he became inclined to do the creation. So he saw the five, five causes of creation, which were indicated by the Lord. So he offered prayers to to the to to, to this. Uh, he offered prayers for this path of creation. And after he offered his prayers, Lord Narayan responded. And Lord Narayan says to Lord Brahma, he said that. He said, "Don't be depressed or anxious about doing the creation." What you are asking for me, what you're begging from me, is already been granted. He said, "I'm very much pleased by your description of me." You just you have described my transcendental qualities nicely. So I grant you all benedictions in your desire to glorify the planets by your acts. All right. So we will stop here today. Is there any questions? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, 问题啊，第一个问题是来自于小小这位奉献者的问题。顶拜公主，感谢翻译，感谢您。
。请问那些在阿帕多怀上的大圣人，用心念冥想着 Krishna 是永恒的吗？他们是活在自己的满足里，还是满足 Krishna 的喜悦呢？ Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. My question is that for those great sages in Kapaloka, because they are meditating the Lord or Krishna through their mind, is that kind of an eternal activity? Uh, do they live in their own satisfaction, or they are, uh, uh, they they, uh, they are living in the happiness from satisfied Lord Krishna? Well. They're living in the material world. They're not liberated yet. But they're very advanced souls. So, what is she asking? Again? Yeah, she's asking. Uh, are they uh, living in the kind of uh, self-satisfaction, uh, or they are living in a kind of happiness to please the Lord Krishna? Well, they're meditating on the Supreme Lord. They're not. Meditating on devotional service, they're just simply remembering the Lord. So you could say they have that sense of self-satisfaction. They are practicing Astanga Yoga, and they are at the they're at the eighth step of Astanga Yoga, the Samadhi. They're in trance. Now, people who live there on that planet, you have like the four Kumaras and you have the nine Yogendras. These people are all in Shantaras. So on Shantara's platform, they appreciate the opulences of the Lord, but they don't engage in any real service. They're just simply meditating, remembering the Lord. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Now, the next question is from K. This question is from K. Please accept the request. 如果心意是感受痛苦和快乐，那我们怎样才能够一直保持平和，让心意一直处于快乐中呢？答案。Marge, please accept my humble obeisance to you and to all the devotees. If um the mind is um and if if it's a mind to feel the uh stress and the happiness, well then how can we? You know, uh, continuously to maintain a kind of a peaceful mind. In that case, we can always to be stay in the happy platform. Thank you. Yes, we have a peace formula in the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna gives a peace formula. It comes in the end at the end of the fifth chapter. You have to remember three things. You have to remember Lord Krishna is the supreme proprietor, Lord Krishna is the supreme enjoyer, and he is also our best friend. Mm-hmm. 
then you should be peaceful. You remember these things. Yes. The next question. Yes. yes. Thank you, Marge. The second question is from Param Radama. This question. Hare Krishna, Ding Bai Guru. My question is, Sheng Ren, Lai Jiao Ni Jian. Sheng Ren, Lai Jiao Ni Jian. You can see. Du Jiao Ni Jian. You cannot see. In our district, we have 20 people divided into two groups. I want to take the lead, take the lead, take the lead, and divide the group. Is the Lord Krishna the leader? Is the Lord Krishna the leader? Is the Lord Krishna the leader? 怎样体现奉献者是如愿树呢？请过这解答，感谢您。Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. My question is that, uh, uh, if you have been asked, if you have been called to take darshan to the, um, to the, uh, holy. Personality, then you can go to take darshan. But if you are not called, uh, you cannot actually take darshan. Then in our area, we have um, um, over 20 devotees and we have been separated with uh, two groups. Um, whoever I want to kick out of this group, and uh, I can do that. So we are in a kind of, uh, uh, you know, separation. We're not really united together. Uh, is this the arrangement from Lord Krishna? Um, how to you know how to how to understand that the devotee is the desire tree? Please explain. Thank you very much. Well, is it the arrangement of Krishna? Yes, you could say it's the arrangement of Krishna's external energy. Because you're not acting in harmony with the Lord, so you act under the material energy. So you separate yourselves. Of course, sometimes separation is necessary because sometimes the numbers become too big. And when the, we have more people together, then it's it's a problem. So sometimes it's better to separate and to make smaller groups. And the more we have groups, then it brings in more people, we get more devotees. But at the same time, we need to feel also harmony and unity together, that we're one family. And we shouldn't think one group better than another group. We're all, you know, one, we're all the one family. We're all practicing the same thing. So don't think that, you know, oh, our group is better than the other group or only our group gets to meet the guru. That's not the mood at all. Rather, everybody sh should be wanted and taken care of and kept satisfied. And you, uh, is the devotee a desire tree? Is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She, she's asking um, how to show that devotee is a desire tree. Well, I don't. Is it is it true a devotee is a desire tree? <laughs> I didn't. Never, I've never heard this before. That a devotee is a desire tree. Well, uh, uh, Marge, because uh, from our uh, um, uh, Vaishnava 
the Vaishnava pranam mantra every day when we chant, you know, there is a statement to oh, see Full of compassion for all the fallen conditional. Yeah, We're just like desired the, trees who are full of yeah. compassion. Okay, yeah. all right. So in that sense, compassion is there. That compassion to the fallen souls, mm -hmm. fulfilling. Sure. We offer our respectful obeisances to all the Vaishnav devotees of the Lord who are just like desired trees, fulfilling the desires of everyone. So, in the sense that the the actual desire of everyone is to be connected to Krishna. Mm -hmm. So the devotees are trying to bring other, showing compassion, trying to bring others into Krishna consciousness. So that is actually their innermost desire to be connected to Krishna. They might, may not, we may not be aware of our inner desire, but actually it is that, that our inner desire, the desire of the soul, is to be connected to Krishna. All right. Yes, Marsh, thank you very much. 那下面这个问题是来自于小草的，请问咕噜经常做梦，梦见咕噜意味着什么呢？呃，Marsh, uh, may I ask you if we oftenly dreamed of a spiritual master or dreamed of a guru, what that mean? Well, it means you should serve the instructions of the spiritual master. Hmm. If you're having dreams like that, you should take it seriously that spiritual master is coming to tell you, you know, you have to do this, you have to do more, you have to chant, you have to do service. Okay. Thank you, Marsh. The, the next uh, question is from Vidarani Sitamati. Divide Guru, Brahma, Zai Chanta Chu, Xiang Chitun Chu, Chi Chula, Puya, Jiao Chisin, Pinche, Yang, Chun Chu, Hui Fan Yuan Zu, Chiran Jiang, Hui Shuma, Chung Jing, Ye Shu Brahma, the Shung Wu Hui, Duo Luna. Marsh, please accept the whole businesses. On in the beginning, Lord Brahma, Pray to uh, to the Supreme Lord uh, to be um, uh, to be uh, away uh, to, to stay away from the mood of uh, proud, pride um, uh, and also uh, very strictly to follow the regulative principles. Um, if that is the case, why um, the the the, 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 the living entity as Brahmana also has the chance to be fall down. You got it? Uh, well, there's a difference between Brahmana and Lord Brahma. Like Lord Brahma, he prayed, right? At the Is that what she's saying? Lord Brahma prayed. Yeah, so, 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 Mar so, so, Mar um, uh, please allow me to say it again. Maybe something is not exactly right when I'm translating. Uh, please allow me to say it again. Um, he, he, she said that uh, in the beginning, Lord Brahma prayed to, Lord, to Supreme Lord uh, to be away from the mood of proud. And, uh, um, and also, he very strictly to follow the relative principles. And she's asking, if that is the case, why? Um, the, the living entity who are in the position of Brahma 
can fall down in the material world. Oh, okay. Why the living entities, when they come to the when they get to position of Brahma, yeah, when they become a Brahma, well, we have to understand that Lord Brahma is a position in the material world and he's not always a pure devotee. He may be a pure devotee, but not always. So it may be the case that Lord Brahma has some attachment to the material world and he will come back, he will take birth again in the material world. Even the, the four Kumaras, the four Kumaras, they also may not go back to Godhead at the end of the life of Brahma. They can enter into Mahavishnu and then they will take birth again when there's a, again creation. So it's not every case, that, it's not true in every case that Lord Brahma is the pure devotee. But he's a very powerful personality. And he's doing great service on behalf of the Lord. But there's no guarantee that they will go back to God. There's no guarantee that just because you come to the position of Lord Brahma that you will go back to Godhead. Okay. The, the next question is still from Madhaji. She Krishna my question is that according to the Sastra, they describe that uh, the reason for the living entity to fall down is because they betrayed the Supreme Lord and they misused their, uh, their uh, independence. Uh, and the living entity, they are, orig they are originally in the spiritual world and the spiritual world is in the absolute perfect situation. Um, so in that case, how the fallen living entities um, will have that kind of idea to betray the Supreme Lord and misuse the independence? See, so what she's asking, since the spiritual world is, um, is absolutely perfect, then how come these living entities will have that kind of uh, betraying thought and also misuse the, uh, the, 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 the independence. Because that is the nature of the living entity, that he is tatasta shakti. That although he may be in the spiritual world, still he has that tendency. Uh -huh. and, and then she asked, uh, um, if Mahavishnu not blunts the material nature, then won't ag agitate the material nature. If that is the case, um, 
but even the living entity has a feeling to fall down, they were not able to fall down. Is that right? <laughs> well, you have to understand that the material nature is also eternal. Sometimes it's manifest and sometimes it's not. But it's always there. And then she is asking, uh, the uh, eternally liberated souls actually are the personal expansion of Lord Krishna. And the conditioned souls actually is the separated uh, expansion of Lord Krishna. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Separated. What, what did she say that the eternally liberated souls are? She's asking if the eternal liberated souls are the personal expansion of Lord Krishna. Not all. Some may be. You know, just like Nanda and Yashoda and Vasudev and Devaki and some of these people, they may, but not all. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those conditioned souls, uh, do, are they the separated expansion of Lord Krishna? Mm, well, yeah, they may be in, in that condition of being separated from Lord Krishna. That's their own choice. But we're, we're, they're all Krishna's energy. Yes, the next question? Yeah. Yeah, the next question is from Kamala Murthy. Mr. Guru, how can you help in the work of the work of the work? Mr. Murthy, please accept my obeisances. My question is that uh, while, while we are rendering the devotional service, uh, how can we make our mind to be more meditated on the Lord? Thank you. By chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. And by hearing about Krishna. Okay. Yes, thank you, Maharaj. The next question from Brother Nanda Bhati, Shri Shri Divai Jinya the Guru Maharaj. Uh, please accept my very humble obeisances to you, Guru Maharaj. My question is that uh, uh, as the very confidential Bhakti Yoga, uh, if we cannot conquer our mind, does that mean that we cannot actually be successful for our spiritual practice? Yes. You must conquer the mind. And then, then, then the next part of the question is that uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what's the conquered mind to, to manifest? What is the manifestation of the conquered mind? Manifestation of the conquered mind is that the mind will be submissive, it will, rem it will remain faithful and chaste to the service of Krishna. Mm. 
Uh huh. Yes. Next question. Yeah. Yeah. 那下面这个问题是来自于 Krishna Priya 八级的问题。Hare Krishna， 顶拜 Guru Dev， 顶拜甜美的翻译们，谢谢你。顶拜所有的奉献者和领导或者长辈相处的时候，如何带着 Krishna 知觉言语行为，让他们感受到备受尊敬？如何在与人相处中取悦 Krishna， 带着正确的心态呢 ？Hello Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances to you, Guru Maharaj.、Uh, my question is that、uh, when we are dealing with our leaders and also dealing with our、uh, seniors,、um, how to behave ourselves with Krishna consciousness to make them feel actually they are respected? And also,、uh, while we are dealing with people, when we socially with people, how to please the Lord Krishna, and、uh, what is、uh, how to、uh, do our actions with the right mentality. Well, we simply have to remember that everyone is a part and parcel of Lord Krishna. You can also think within your mind how they are a part and parcel of Krishna. 那那首先呢，我们应该意识到，所有的一切，所有的人，他们都是是 Krishna 的不可分割的一部分。然后呢，我们在心念中也应该想着，他们如何是作为 Krishna 的不可分割的一部分的。And deal respectfully with them. 呃，然后呢，我们就可以呃，非呃，心存敬意的和他们呃，相相呃，和他们交流。If somebody is a leader or somebody is in a senior position, then naturally you have to give them proper respect. You have to show courtesy to them. Hmm. Because, uh, if it's uh, for the senior leadership or for our elders, then we just naturally, of course, need to show them courtesy. We should show them courtesy. And for people who are lower than us, we will be compassionate to them. Then, when they are lower than us, 呃 ，So recognizing all living entities as being parts and parcels of Krishna, we will deal respectfully. 那我们应该意识到，所有的生物体都是属于 Krishna 不可分割的一部分。所以呢，我们在对他们，在对待每一个生物的时候，都应该是尊敬有加。嗯 ，You have to have some vision of the Paramatma. 呃，那所以说呢，我们应该有这个呃超龄的这种意识，超龄的视域。So Shri Prabhupada was on television, and he was asked by the interviewer, "How would we recognize a devotee of Krishna?" And Prabhupada immediately replied that, "Oh, he will be a perfect gentleman." 嗯，所以呢，嗯，说爸爸有一次在接受一次电视台的采访的时候。呃，这个呃，采访者就问他，就如何能够认识到谁是奉献者呢？然后沙拉里克就回答说，这个奉献者他所表现出来的这种状态是一位非常优雅的呃绅士。And we have the example of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, how they were loved by everyone, the gentle and the ruffians. 嗯，所以呢，我们也有在弗拉文的六位波斯巴米做我们展现出来的榜样。So this should be the behavior devotee. 嗯，那所以说呢，这个应该是一位奉献者的行为举止。All right. How many more questions are you having there? One, two, three, four. Oh, it's very late now here. You know, I don't know how many more questions we have time for. Maybe. Uh, so, so do you want to answer these four questions and ask the devotees to stop asking questions, or do you want to keep these four questions for next time? I think we have to keep the four questions for next time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, because Maharaj said, now time is very short, so we have four questions. Maharaj said, these four questions, we will wait for the next time to ask Maharaj to answer. Okay. 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 Valuable translation today. We thank all the devotees for listening and participation. Uh, we uh, thank all the devotees for listening and participation.
Thank you so much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.